Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our YouTube channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is actually going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is also fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you are watching the video from. The county or the country in case you are out of the republic. And for those who are outside the country, kindly let me know the name of your country in the comment section because I want to take note of where our viewership are actually coming from. Ladies and gentlemen, William Samoy Arap Ruto has made another shocking appointment. William Ruto appointed Charles Keter as one of his advisors. Charles Keter will be advising William Ruto on the issues of Great Lake region affairs. Charles Keter will now join the ranks of, of people like uh, David Ndi, who is also an advisor on economic affairs. But for me, the appointment of Charles Keter is significant politically speaking, if you were to ask me. Charles Keter worked with Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. And at some point, Charles Keter was a very close ally of William Samoy Arap Ruto. But let us not get there first. Let us go back to June. For those who follow the politics of this country in June this year, William Ruto made another shocking appointment. William Ruto appointed Isaac Ruto, the former governor for Bomet, as a member of the Judicial Service Commission. Judicial Service Commission is one of the critical bodies in the Republic of Kenya. As a matter of fact, the guy who is serving as the chief of staff and head of the public service used to be a member of the Judicial Service Commission. And of course, for those who understand politics, they believe that is the one who brokered the, the deal between Ruto and the judiciary. But that's not the issue now. I want us to focus on the appointment of Charles Keter by William Samoy Arap Ruto. Again, in politics, nothing happens out of mere coincidence. You know, Isaac Ruto was one of the critics of William Ruto. In fact, Isaac Ruto lost his gubernatorial seat because of his fight with William Ruto. I'm sure today, Isaac Ruto would be either a cabinet secretary or a powerful individual around William Samara Ruto. So when Ruto appointed him in uh, June, probably there was something which William Ruto wanted. Now he has added another gentleman, Charles Keter. Who is Charles Keter? Charles Keter served as a member of parliament for Belgut. In 2002, he was elected in 2002, ODM wave. Again in 2007, he was elected, he was re-elected. Then in uh, 2013, he was elected now as a senator for Kericho. You remember, that's the time William Ruto and Uru Kenyatta won the presidency through Jubilee. By that time, I think they were, we had URP, if I'm not wrong. Then... And in the first Uru Kenyatta Ruto's government, they focused on technocrats. And then at some point, William Ruto and Uru Kenyatta felt that they needed some politician on board because things were not going their way. So they had to look, William Ruto had to look for a close ally. And that close ally was none other than Charles Keter. Charles Keter had to resign for him to take that appointment. In fact, the other day I was listening to Kipchumba Murkomen when he was uh, giving his story that he started noticing the problem between Ruto and Uhuru during that by-election because there are certain things which happened, which, of course, the, the, the Kanu guy almost won that seat. But that's also a story for an, another day. So Charles Keter served as the Minister for Energy. Ministry of Energy is one of the most lucrative ministries in the Republic of Kenya. And William Ruto, most people believe, made a lot of his money when Charles Keter was the minister for energy. Especially the Kenya power poles, you know, the, the meters and the rest. So when Ruto fell out with Uhuru, after the 2022 election, Charles Keter remained. But he then decided to, res to, to resign to contest in Kericho. Most people expected Keter to easily win the Kericho gubernatorial seat in 2022. But again, he was humiliated by a gentleman called Eric Keter. 
Most people, Eric Mutai, I think Eric Mutai, the governor there, most people believe up to now that Keter was defeated because William Ruto wanted him to be taught a political lesson. And that's why his appointment, in my view, is significant politically speaking. So in this video, I want us to look at what's motivating Ruto to appoint Charles Keter and to some extent um, Isaac Ruto and maybe who, who, who knows, maybe the next person who is going to be appointed would be none other than uh, Alfred Mutua. Ah, Alfred Keter. The Nandales, the former Nandales members of member of parliament. Or who do you think Ruto should appoint those group, the rebel groups? <laughs> but before we get into all those, in case you are watching the channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support. Because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. And without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to dive in. Why do you think Roto is appointing the rebels in court? Because there was a feeling at some point that Keter was not working very closely with Ruto. Remember, Ruto only retained Chelugui as one of the former ministers. Because Chelugui was his guy, he used him to fight more, Gideon Moy in 20, was it in 2017? Gideon Moy defeated him. He was appointed then to the cabinet because, you know, Chilugui initially wanted to become the governor for Gubaringo, but he was very popular. So what Ruto did, he decided to convince him to contest for Senate where Moi was contesting. Then Moi defeated him. Then he was appointed to the cabinet. So that, that's the reward system. So why is it important? Number one, in my view, I think Ruto is keen on consolidating the Rift Valley. You know, sometimes you have to bring your flocks together. Even the ones which are outside there. And that's the only mistake I think Rado Dinga has always made. He's always failing to bring on board those who have fallen out with him. Ruto is doing that without much effort. He has brought Isaac Ruto. Rest assured, Isaac Ruto will not be loyal to Ruto. He has not brought Charles Keter. Rest assured, Keter will now be one of the most loyal supporters of Ruto. Just like Rado did to to, to a young Nyongo, you know, you know, at some point a young Nyongo post him, then he ensured he was defeated, Nyongo was defeated, then he resurrected him. Nyongo is now loyal, the same to Arango. That's, I think, is what Ruto is doing. Now, these guys were going to, I mean, this, these are some of the few guys who had the potential of disrupting William Ruto in Rift Valley. And of course, if they teamed up with people like Gideon Moy, at, even if they didn't have much, much uh, support on the ground, but you see, that noise is unnecessary. So in my view, I tend to think that William Ruto believes that charity begins at home. When he talks of consolidating other parts of the country, then he can be asked why he's not consolidating Rift Valley. So he's now beginning with Rift Valley. And for me, that's significant politically speaking. Number two, if you ask me, I think Ruto's, William Ruto's reward system is working. If you look at the history of Charles Keter, and Ruto, they've uh, worked very closely, they've come from far. So even if they had some misunderstanding along the way, the truth is William Ruto is not the president, which means Keter cannot really compete. Just the same way William Ruto is the president, there is no way Isaac Ruto can compete. So he's deciding, okay, let me reward these guys because at some point these guys were critical in his bid. Keter played a big role in William Ruto's success. If William Ruto were to write history, Keter will not miss. And of course also, Isaac Ruto. If you, if you study the history of Isaac Ruto and Ruto, there's a way you will find a space there. So Ruto is now rewarding them because his reward system is working. Unlike uh, Ray Lodinga, you know, Ray Lodinga sometimes the, the, is being accused of not really rewarding some of his close allies, that when opportunities arise, will pick someone else in the name of regional balance. You see, Ruto is just doing it. Pick Kalenjin here, put it in there, bring another Kalenjin here, put there. I mean, the country is moving on. Nothing will happen. So for me, Ruto reward system is actually working. 
And number three, if you ask me, I'm also looking at William Ruto positioning him, his succession politics, what I can call post-2032 politics. William Ruto believes that he's going to win again. And he's not going to be the president after that. But he needs some strong men in Rift Valley. And that's why he has reached out to Isaac Ruto, who will still play active role in politics. Then I also believe that's why he's also bringing Charles Keter, who understands politics a bit. And I'm seeing in the picture Kipchumba Murkomen. Because these appointments, they've been happening, but Kipchumba Murkomen, something tells me, is behind them. The other day you saw Kipchumba Murkomen uh, with uh, Isaac Ruto. And then this appointment. What do you think Murkomen discussed with Isaac Ruto? Probably they discussed ritual politics, how to bring them together. Because William Ruto is actually grooming Kipchumba Murkomen. So it means it's Murkomen who's now been tasked with bringing all these guys together for the purposes of 2032. Number four, in my view, I think Ruto is also trying now to bring experienced politician to his side. For a long time, William Ruto lacked those kind of people around him. You wouldn't really name any experienced politician. He, he picked most greenhorns. And now he's now trying to fix that by bringing on board. <laughs> In my view, people with enough political experience, people who can tell him certain things, maybe better than those greenhorns. And lastly, he's buying the loyalty of these people. If you look at the at uh, 48 laws of power, there's a law there which states that you should avoid free lunch. So Ruto is offering these guys free lunch and they're accepting. Basically, he has, he has put their loyalty. Rest assured that Charles Keter is going to serve William Ruto with at most dedication and loyalty. Isaac Ruto the same, because their loyalty have been bought. I don't know what to think. That's my take. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.